Okay, we're back. We're going to the phone. We're going to the phone now. Okay, Susan Gerbic. This is the second video of me breaking down a, a breaking down some psychic readings, medium mystery readings from Thomas John, who's the seatbelt psychic dude. And he's on the phone on a radio show. I think it's out of Connecticut. <clears throat> the host is Lisa Wexler, W-E-X-L-E-R. She's a probate judge in Connecticut. She is um, sister to Jill Zarin, Z-A-R-I-N. And Jill Zarin is one of those housewives of someplace famous who has a Wikipedia page too. So I think Jill's going to come up in this conversation again. Um, if you have not listened to the first episode, the first of this series with Thomas John and Lisa Wexler, you might want to go back and listen to the first one. I don't know how many videos are going to be because I'm going to make a video for every person who calls in and I'm going to go to the audio because it's just audio and then I'm going to break in and I'm going to evaluate it. And then I'm going to go back to the audio and back and forth. So I don't know if the readings two, three, four minutes, they're generally going to be under five minutes. So triple that. And that's about how long my, my video be. I don't know. I have not listened to any of these um, audio that is about to come up. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I've been following Thomas John for so many years, listening to his readings. I have a feeling I know what's going to happen. All right. So these are people calling in. Typically on a call-in radio show, when there's a psychic there, there's a screener who's going to take the call, find out their name, make sure they're coherent and make sure they're articulate enough to be on the radio. And they're usually going to get some kind of basic information. Um, for a psychic, they're going to ask, you know, who is it you want to get a hold of? Uh, maybe they'll ask what they died of. Maybe they'll ask something because you've got a whole bunch of people calling in. And remember, it's it's a show. So they only want the best stories to get on the show. So it's possible the screener has screened them, picked out the best, and they've been sitting here waiting in line for a while while Lisa was talking about her papa, Jack, and her aunt, Cookie, and their wedding 55th anniversary. Make sure you watch the first video see what I'm talking about. I mean, the, the show, this radio show is only like 30 minutes long and we're already almost 15 minutes into it. And all he's done is read the host. I'm going to put in the description for this video, I will put a link to this, to this reading I'm about to do. Well, I'm about to evaluate and the video will start at the moment that the reading starts. So you don't have to go skipping back and forth trying to find this specific reading you're looking at. I will put it in there for you. I am very likely going to make mistakes, forget something, or not notice something that you probably will notice. As I said, I'm going to do this cold, just like Thomas John's going to do it cold. And um, so please write in the comments what you think I've missed, what he's missed, if you think I'm being too hard on him or the guest or whatever, please let me know. I'm really curious what you guys are going to say. Keep in mind that the sitter is not at fault for falling victim to these things. Yes, the sitter has uh, should know better, I think. But some people are raised in this culture and they believe that communication with the dead is just as likely as dandelions are going to grow in your front yard this like duh of course so not everybody has the benefit of the critical thinking not critical thinking abilities because these people aren't stupid but it just hasn't dawned on them that maybe they should look into it it, may, it might not be real a lot of people will approach me and they say mediumship communication with the dead is possible but some of these mediums and psychics are cheating so they try to pick which one is the best one not it doesn't occur to them to think 
no one is communicating with the dead. I don't know. Maybe he's going to get this right. I don't know. But Thomas John is not great at cold reading. I know that. I've been following him for years, like I said, and I've, I've, I've listened to all kinds of readings from all kinds of mediums. Some are really good cold readers. Thomas isn't a good cold reader. He's a hot reader. In other words, he has information about the person before they start the reading. Cold reading is, they're just going from their vote. Well, it's an audio. He's going to go for the voice. He's going to be able to get that kind of information. I don't think he's getting information from the, uh, the person who got the information on the phone. I don't think he's doing that. I don't think she's, she, Lisa probably has the information, but it's probably really basic. And I don't think she's giving it to Thomas at all. Okay. This should be interesting. Okay. Let's see what we come up with. I don't know how long it's going to go for. I'll stop and start, stop and start. We'll see what happens. Pay attention. This is coming to the sitter hot and fast. There's a lot of the words um, may have double meanings. We'll, we'll play with it. Let's see what happens. I feel it very, mm -hmm. very strong. Yeah, I think there's going to be some some shift. I mean, it, it might be not like immediate, but I, I I see stuff within the next, you know, yeah, like six months and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty close. That's immediate for me. I'm, I'm a snail in this world. That's very immediate for me. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go to uh, Mike from Stratford. You've been holding so long. You're on the air with one of the premier oh, psychics. Hi, Here we go. Thank go you. ahead, Mike. Hello, Thomas. Hi, how are you? I am well. How are you? Thank you for taking my call. Thanks for calling in. What can I help you with? I'm just wondering. I had a parent pass a couple of years ago. If you can sense anything. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I do feel a couple of things, but can I just tell you one thing first? You said your name's Mike? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, Mike, the first thing I did want to tell you before you asked me that, because there was something else that came through that I just I wanted to just tell you real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, I see some because I can't always control where my mind goes, but I do feel something around you about your parents. So let me just deal with that in one second. Um, I do see like a career shift that's going to be happening with you. Something I see something a door opening with career stuff for you. Um, and I feel like this is going to be. I feel it's going to be more towards the summertime, but it, it almost feels like something where. Spirit showed me something where you're a little bit more showcased or it's more, I can't explain it. It's something where you're being given more credit or you have more, there's more of a focus on you in some way. So I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I see something with your career that I feel is going to be very positive, I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, that um, does make sense. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be happening. Also, I want to ask you this, Mike. Do you have a close grandmother in spirit, a grandmother that you were very close to? Um, I have an aunt who was kind of like grandmother. Okay. Has... Can I ask you, okay, can I ask you with her, uh, would she have known your, your? Uh, does she know your parent that passed? Are they connected? Yeah. Yes. Are close. they connected through, are they connected through like bloodline or are they connected just Marriage. through your family? Are they... Oh, okay. Huh. Interesting. Okay. I'm not sure that just got. Um, let me ask you also too. Let's just stop. I don't know where this is gonna go. So I don't know if I'm gonna have too many more interruptions. So because like I said, it comes at these people fast and furious. It's very difficult to um to analyze it. He's Mike from Stratford is probably been on hold for a very long time and is very stressed about it and is so excited he's about to talk to Thomas John. So there's that. These people are willing to bend a little bit to help the psychic, give it a little more extra information to try to help the psychic to find the right person that he wants to get a hold of. Mike wants to get a hold of his, he wants to know about his parents who passed a, a couple of years ago, as I wrote down. Thomas doesn't want to talk about that. He wants to talk about something he knows. Okay. It is difficult when you're cold reading to give information about something that you already know about. You are already looking for because you already in your mind know what's going on. And now Thomas John has to, um, 
pivot around. So what what he'll do is he'll he'll change the subject and now he's changed it to your career in the summer and you're gonna have more recognition. Well, who does that not apply to? Somebody's gonna change career, possibly. Uh, what Thomas is gonna call him up and say, did you change your career? I mean, no, nobody's gonna check. A lot of psychics will make it a prediction three months, six months, nine months, a year from now, knowing fully well that you will have either forgotten or you will not be in touch with them anymore anyway. So it doesn't matter. Okay. So, okay, whatever. Do you have a close grandmother in spirit and are they connected to, first, do you have a close grand, a woman who is a grandmother and you were very close to her in spirit? The answer is no. He does not have a close grandmother in spirit. He has an aunt that is not a grandmother. I'm not giving it to him. He should know. Okay. So the aunt, so we're going back and forth. Are they related? Are they by blood to the person who's passed over? And okay, let's find out what happens next. I don't know. Your parent that passed, is this, I feel like this is somebody you were taking care of. Were you taking care of this person? Sort of. You know. No. Look at okay. that. Yeah, look, look, so you were checking in with them and stuff like that. Okay, gotcha. Um, let me ask you this because I'm feeling this. Um, I don't know if you are, well, one thing I will tell you is I do feel, um, and it's interesting, Mike, because I do get a very, very strong male around you, too. I don't know if this could – oh, no. Hold on one second. And, and and let me ask you this, Mike. What are you doing right now, right now, that they're showing me around? Like, for some reason, I'm seeing houses or something. I don't know why this is why this is coming up. Are you, are you doing anything? Um, I don't know why that's coming up, but I feel like they're showing me something with houses or – are you, are you doing anything right now with a house or anything like we're that? Looking, we're looking at real estate, and I used to take care of the house that the, my, the parent lives in. Okay, so so you're very connected to the house and stuff, and, you, and you're 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 dealing with that or looking at that a little bit. It, yeah, 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 but it's all, okay. yeah we, okay. we, we finished up with the house. Yeah. Okay. 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 Because um, I feel like yeah, I want to say also this person. Um, I feel that they are very, is this your, is, did you lose your dad, Mike? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting because it feels like, um, I think he's around you a lot, Mike. I feel like he is around you a lot. He's a spirit to me that I feel is not necessarily like an intrusive spirit. So I don't know if he's the type of spirit that, you know, you may not feel him always all around you 24-7, but it feels like he's going to be around you when he needs to be. And also, he keeps talking about the last 10 years and that yeah. he's really happy about the last 10 years or he's happy that you got – I don't know, but I get something about the last 10 years. I don't know why that's coming up. Um, I don't know if you something happened between you, but for some reason he keeps talking about the last 10 years. Um, but, yeah, I do feel like he is around you. Also, Mike, have you? Can I just ask you one thing? Have you found pennies a lot? Do you find pennies? I found Lily found a penny today. Wow! Okay. So I don't know for some reason that comes up, but I just for some reason I am seeing that stuff. Um, but I, I, I know that your dad is okay. No. No. There's got to be, a, if there was a cold reading book and they do exist laying around page one, tell them there is a penny from heaven that was sent by the loved one. That is, there's, there's like 15 tropes. That is probably number one. Find coins. They're sending you coins. What the heck does that mean? You find a coin, you look at the year on it. Thomas John didn't give him no year. At least not yet. Maybe he does. And that year is supposed to correspond to something that happened in the person's life. Like they're sending money to you. 
If the dead is sending money to you, why is he sending pennies? Are they materializing pennies? Are they like counterfeiting them? Are they like moving them from one location to be in front of you where you will find it? Are they poofing it into existence? What in the world are they talking about? If you're going to be pushing money on somebody, let's get some $100 bills out there. I mean, at least a dollar coin. No pennies. Pennies. You know why it's always pennies? Because people throw their pennies around. They, it, it takes a hundred of them to make a dollar. You can't even you can't even go to the dollar store and buy anything for a dollar. Now it's a dollar twenty five plus tax. So you'd have to have hundred and twenty five pennies and more for the tax to buy some piece of some bubble gum at the store. That's how worthless a penny is now. People throw them. But it is a trope. My gosh, they use it all the time. They usually use it with, with cat, uh, just coins. But a penny? What's next? Are we going to get music? They're sending you music or cardinals. That's another one I, I hear a lot from psychics and birds. Feathers. They, did you find a leaf? <laughs> all right. Were you taking care of your parents? No. I was checking in on them. Oh, the grandmother. Were you taking care of them? Or the aunt? Who, whoever he's talking about at this point. Were you, were you taking care of them? No. Okay, that's a myth. He was checking in on them. What does it mean by taking care of them? I think taking care of them means you're taking them to their appointments, you're separating their medication, you're getting them dinner, you're helping bathe them, taking care of them, doing their bills, not calling them up and saying, hey, mom, how you doing? Um, are you seeing houses? I don't know what the deal with with the house. Did you lose your dad? Did he just ask him, is his dad dead? The first thing he said, I wrote it down here. The very first thing when he got on the call was my parents passed, my parents passed a couple years ago. So when your dad is, that usually means your dad is dead. It's so hard for me not to get snarky. I'm sorry. If this bugs you, let me know. Because it's really hard. Did you lose your dad? Yes. Well, you knew that a couple of years ago. If your parents had a house, then you have to deal with the house, the real estate of the house. You have to take care of all that. Because this man sounds a little bit older in his 50s, maybe 60s. So he's probably already established with his own home. And so now he has to uh, take care of his parents' property because they both, both, two, have passed a couple years ago. So of course they have to deal with the house. So what is the big deal? And what's the last 10 years? He's been so happy in the last 10 years. The guy could have been in a coma for the last 10 years. Well, he's been dead a couple years, but... Well, why would you say stuff like that? Well, okay, I don't know how much longer this reading is going to go, but I'm already over it. So let's see. Kind of in a, in a but he's he's telling me that the end was very weird, and there's like things that happened that it's kind of like you were confused by. But I I I get the feeling that he's in a good place, um, and for some reason it seems like he's helping you with this house stuff, maybe or like whatever's going on. Like trying to, you know, figure that out or something. Okay. Yeah, no, you, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I yeah, hope thanks you're for calling. Better. Thomas, John, can you stay with us one moment? We're here on live radio. We got. Okay. I would say that's one of the worst cold readings I've ever heard, but I've heard worse. Or, and I've heard some just exactly like that. Okay. I guess, I guess we're done with Mike and Stratford. What did he get? I'm waiting for you guys to tell me. He's going to have a career shift in the summer and he's going to be, it's going to be a positive mood move. They're going to start recognizing him. He had a grandmother in spirit. No, wait, wait. 
he was not close to his grandmother. He had an aunt. So that was wrong. Were you taking care of them? No. Are you seeing houses and dealing with the house? Well, sort of, but we've already done that. So that's a no. And it's also obvious considering the house has to already be dealt with. Somebody's going to deal with it. Did you lose your dad? Yes, I lost my dad. But you, but I just told you that, what, two minutes ago? Of course, they're both dead. And I said a couple, the last 10 years have been happy, but I don't know anything about it. Mike from Stratford's going, okay, then. And he's always around you, platitude, platitude. What do you want him to say? No, he's out on vacation. He hasn't paid any attention to you whatsoever. And have you found any pennies? Big fat zero. That's called a cold reading, folks. And if you listen to the first one, where Thomas John is reading the host because he knows he's going to be on the show, that's completely different from a cold reading where he doesn't know anything. He's cold. He's trying to go for general, 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 general statements. What did he miss? What did Thomas John miss? Right? He's in contact with people. Well, he didn't tell us anything about the parents, which the the caller, Mike from St Stratford, said, I want to know about my parents. So all he's able to tell him is the last 10 years have been good. He's helping you with the house and um, he's happy and he sent you a penny. He didn't know any names. He said, are you very close to a grandmother in spirit? Well, why didn't you just tell us her name? And when he said, no, I am was close to an aunt who's died. Thomas didn't give us a name. Were you taking care of him? No. Were you seeing houses? Could you tell us where the houses were? Were they in Stratford, Connecticut? Um, he didn't give us anything. He didn't tell him a name. He didn't tell him a place. He didn't tell him really anything. That was pretty pathetic. Let's see if all the readings are like this. So uh, again, the burden proof is not on the skeptics. This is, uh, Thomas John is making this great big fat claim saying, I can communicate with the dead. Okay. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The burden of proof is on Thomas John, not on me, not on the world of science, not on scientific skepticism. I'm just happened to do this because I, Believe it or not, I actually enjoy doing these kinds of things. I find them interesting and I'm doing a lot of research on psychics and I love um, the different styles and how they have their own way of doing things. So listening to a bunch of readings in one spot without jumping between psychics too much is, is very interesting to me. It's great for my research. Most of the sitters have never challenged mediumship, the, even the ideas uh, most sitters are highly motivated to make the reading work because they are trying to hold on to the connection that the medium has with their dead family members. So they're more likely to agree on things that, you know, are kind of tenuous. Um, they're afraid that the connection will be broken and that they'll have the move on to another call. Kind of like he's doing. Um most people don't analyze their readings. This guy's probably getting off the call and saying, he probably will tell his family members, oh my gosh, I, I was I was on the Lisa Wexer uh, show and I got to talk to Thomas John, the very famous, world famous seatbelt psychic dude. And he, he got, he got aunt so-and-so and he knew that we were selling mom and dad's house. He knew that dad had died and dad is telling him that he's at peace. And it was the most amazing reading ever. That's probably what this guy is telling his family. And he'll never think of it anyway. Again, it will just be, that's what it was. So remember, this is unedited. Most psychics that you see on TV are on shows that are heavily edited in favor of the psychic. They only want to show the best clips and make them look the best right? Because the show wants to continue having season after season. So they want to look as good as possible. So they're going to, anything that's awful is on the cutting room floor. It's gone. So that's why when you go to a show, if you were to attend a show, 
and it is filming for two hours or more. If you watch the show later, it's down to, you know, 20 minutes plus commercials because they're pulling out the best. And if there's really good stuff, it's there. Everything else that's not there is not the best. Okay. So please comment under this video. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to do some more readings. I think we have 10 minutes left in this video. So he should be able to get to a couple more people by now. Let's see if they're any better. It's, I'm curious to find out. Maybe he's going to, I mean, obviously Lisa uh, Wexer really thinks he's amazing. So because she got his, her papa jacked. Stay tuned. Leave your comments in the, in the YouTube channel. And I will see you in the next video.